What's up guys, it's Carrie from Carrie Bow Berry Co. and welcome back. Uh, change of scenery today, hope you don't mind. Um, but I am so excited to be with you guys today because I have so much to catch you up on. So I am really looking forward to my next video because I finally have ordered a lighting kit and a tripod. So hopefully that is really gonna help with this whole filming situation. I won't be at the mercy of daylight anymore or my kids nap times. Um, so hopefully that will kind of free me up to do, you know, filming in different areas of the house or different times of the day. So that will hopefully limit me a little bit less. So super excited about that. So hopefully you'll see that in my next video as long as everything comes in, um, you know, the way it's supposed to, it's not broken or anything like that. So fingers crossed for that. Also, I am super excited about this week's spread because it turned out so cute. So when I think of January, I kind of think of cold and the weather is kind of crappy and you know not so fun so I think of a lot of indoor time spent so cozy coffee blankets slippers all that kind of stuff so that immediately made me think of yoga So that's what I went with with my theme this week. I got this book from my sister-in-law last year for Christmas, who is also a stay-at-home mom. So, um, you know, we were kind of talking about the yoga life, basically. So um, thank you, Natalie. I've been kind of diving into this, and this was my whole inspiration for my theme this week. Um, but yoga is a... Um, Danish or Nor Norwegian word, and it's, it basically loosely translates to cozy, um, but it's kind of a whole, it's more than just cozy, it's a whole state of being, it's feelings of wellness and contentment and a mood of coziness. So that is what I went with in this gorgeous spread, if I do say so myself. So I am in love with it. I get all the cozy vibes when I am flipping through my bullet journal and I just am so excited about it. I can't wait to add more things to it um, once I start filling in with my lists and making it functional. Then I like to go back in and add a little bit more um, decoration throughout the week. So I have a few more ideas but I didn't want to take up too much white space because you know me, I need function in my bullet journal. I went a little bit overboard as far as the detail and everything. This was kind of hard. It was um, a lot of textures that I had to uh, kind of figure out how to bring to life. So, um, but I, I, I love it. I hope that you do too. So, um, without further ado, if you want to see how I created my Hugo spread for the week, then stay tuned. Okay guys, so I'm starting with this shag blanket rug uh, sort of home decor item. Um, it's going to be a white fur blanket, but I'm using gray first as a shadow so I'm just going through and kind of just making gray fuzziness and then I'm gonna go back in with my white gel pen to add the white fur to it and then the gray underneath will just look like shadow it'll give it some dimension and depth back through 
through and going back over the spots that I feel are a little bit too dark. So just adding a little bit more white in those darker spots. And now I am just making a sad attempt at trying to make it look like the fur of the blanket is going in different directions, but I realized that that effort was futile, so I gave up. So now I am just going in and adding coffee to all of my cups and mugs throughout the spread. And now we're going to go at this cable knit blanket. So this is, um, the look I was going for on this was kind of like the look that you get when you do that like arm knitting. Have you guys ever seen that? Um, so I wanted it to look chunky and fun, but I also didn't want it to, I just wanted it to look like something that you might have made on the weekend when you're feeling really, uh, you know, in the Huga mindset. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going through and making the stitches. So I am going in and going in both directions. So it almost kind of looks like a little heart. And those are going to be the little knits. And then, so I'm going through and Kind of retracing the spots that I want to be dark so I am actually adding some shading and shadow in here without actually having to use a different color so that's what I love about using markers is that I can just use the same color but get different depths and lightness and darkness so just by going over these little shadowy areas a couple of times I'm gonna get a darker look and then when I go and fill it all in like this then the highlighted parts are going to look a little bit lighter and then those parts that I had gone over a couple extra times are gonna look nice and deep and shadowy and you know have lots of dimension to it So now it's time for these super cute fuzzy socks. So I wanted them to look really um, like slouchy, the kind of like fuzzy, heavy socks that you wear in a month like January, at least where I live. Um, so I wanted them to look like gray socks with white designs on them. So rather than going and coloring the whole sock and then trying to go back over it with a white gel pen, I am just leaving the, I'm tracing around the design and then just filling in the gray parts so that the white stays as white as possible. Because what I have found already with using the white gel pen is that if you're going over top of a dark color then you don't necessarily get the whitest white that you could possibly have so when I really want a white design to stand out then I like using this method of just leaving the design white and just not coloring any of it so there's my cute little socks and here are the black leggings because who doesn't love wearing black leggings while they are lounging around and getting all comfy cozy. So I keep kind of jumping around here um, because there are certain elements that I know I want to be a certain color. I already have that planned out in my head. Whereas there's other elements that I'm not quite sure yet. So what I like to do when that happens is go through and do the elements that I already have the colors planned out. And then that way I can kind of see how the spread is coming together 
and the parts that I don't really know yet what color I want to make it, that decision becomes easier once I start laying down colors in other places. So right now I'm working on these candles and I want them to really have a super glowy effect to them. So what I actually am using are some old markers of mine because they're pretty dried out. So um, what I like about that is that I can kind of get a more blendy look with them. And then I am going in with my tan Crayola Super Tip and this is... Um, like, I kind of want an off-white color for these candles. Um, you'll see me do this with all the candles in the spread and I think a couple of the books too, but the tan that I have is the closest thing to an off-white. Um, so what I do is I just colored lightly with it and then I went back over it with the white gel pen. So now I'm just going through and creating the actual flame of the candle. And some of these candles are going to be inside of a cute little glass jar. So I'm just going to outline them really quick and then you'll see me add the little jars around some of the candles just to give it, you know, to break it up a little bit. And my apologies that my hair keeps popping into frame. I, uh, you know, with this spread being so detailed, a lot of times I had to just really get down close to see what I was doing. So that hair just kept sneaking on in there. So my apologies. Hopefully the next video that I make, I'll be able to get some different angles going with my new tabletop tripod. So we shall see. So now I am going in to um, create the firewood. So I'm using, if you can't really tell from this distance, but I'm using similar but slightly different browns to make the different twigs and logs for the fire so that they all look cohesive and they all look you know like wood and that they came from the same tree but you know just to kind of give it some contrast and for the fire I am starting with a darker orange, a more vibrant orange, and then I'm going in now with a medium, more yellow orange, and then I'll go in with a yellow gold color to just give it a, you know, dimensional kind of look and make it look like a burning fire. So here I am uh, tackling this hand down here, and you guys... This hand was such a struggle when I was going through and doing the pencil drawing of it. Hands are not my strong suit. Um, so the amount of time that it took me to get this hand the way I wanted it was just absolutely ridiculous. But I finally got it the way that I wanted it. I refused to give up on it. Um, and I actually think that it ended up turning out really, really cute. And one thing that I have discovered between this spread and also the set of hands in my um, hot cocoa spread, one thing that really, really helps me with the hand situation is this these sleeves. So kind of having those like super long slouchy sleeves like that that go all the way up to almost the fingers that really eliminates a lot of the um, hand struggle that I encounter. So, little tip for you, if you also struggle with drawing hands, then just add one of those little Huga type sleeves, and that really helps me. So 
I'm creating the same effect with this candle over here. I used the different yellows and oranges to get that glowy look. And then I combined the tan marker and white gel pen. And then I'm just outlining my coffee cup over here. And I'm just using a super light gray to create the little sock seam, because why not? While we're at it, we'll just go ahead and tackle the rest of the outlines of these coffee cups. And this one has a little saucer, so I'm just putting a little gray under here for some shadow. And now we are going for this, I'm, I guess I'm calling it a journal since it just has a little heart on it. Um, but I'm doing the same thing over here for that off-white color. So I started with some tan and now I'm just going over top of that with a white gel pen to give it more of an off-white look, not so much a tan look. So now this book underneath, I'm using that same tan marker to create some contrast on the second book. And you would never know from looking at this that I used the same marker for both books. So now I'm just going in with my Prismacolor pen um, from my hand lettering kit that I got as a gift for Christmas and it is a super 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 fine tip which has been super helpful um, you know with all of these little fine details like this um, so I just use that to outline the books and to also create the lines that make the pages and so now I am just using a variety of a couple different browns to make this little wooden tray that the books and coffee are sitting on. Um, I thought that I would like the different colors of wood. Um, I'm, I'm using a different brown here as well, it's harder to tell, but I end up not liking the tan very much, so I'm going to go over that with a darker brown. Um, so from a distance, if like up close you can kind of tell, um, but from over here it looks like I just used the same color all the way through, um, but the brown and tan was just a little too much contrast for me. And just check to see if that white gel pen is dry so now I'm going in with a different gel pen this one's called stardust and it's just kind of a cute little sparkly color so I just wanted to have uh, a sparkly little heart on my journal here and then I am drawing a pair of glasses just sitting on top of the books which I think are super cute um, but I end up not loving how the arms look so I'm going over it with that stardust gel pen to make it look like the glasses have metal arms versus having dark brown arms that match the frames so now I am finally starting on this little armchair down here. I was so excited to include this because it just screamed coziness to me. However, I was so intimidated to draw it and, um, and color it and I was just so nervous that I was going to mess it up or that it was just going to look like a big gray blob, but I actually really like how it turned out all things considered so even though it looks like I am using all different kinds of different kinds of grays to make the different tones that I've got going on here I think I only used two different markers so I just was using the method where I go over the dark areas 
extra times to get a little bit more shadow and then the areas where I wanted extra darkness then I just went with a slightly darker marker. And now this throw afghan I guess you could call it. Um, same thing here I was so excited to include this and I wanted it to turn out really nice however I was Oh, there's my little baby hand. <laughs> my daughter was being super fussy during the filming of this video, so at some point I ended up picking her up, and she decided that she was going to make an appearance. So, there she is. That's my baby. Um, so yeah, this afghan here, I wanted it to look just like it was thrown. You know, a blanket's easy enough to draw when it's flat, but I did not want it to look flat. I wanted it to look just kind of like thrown over and like, you know, wrinkled and folded and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's why the design is kind of offset like that. And now I'm just going in where all of the little folds and crinkles are and adding some shadow there. using my fine black pen to just add a little more definition to the armchair. And now we're going to go at this table. So this also has a little stack of books here, but one of the books is open. So I'm just going in with my super fine tip pen and um, outlining and then also creating the little lines that make the pages. And the bottom book is going to be a dark brown color and then I'm just adding some shadow underneath of it or underneath of the open book. And now I'm just going to use the same wood colors that I've been using for the wood on the fire and the wood um, tray that is under the books and the coffee up top and just tying those same wood colors in with this little side table right here. So for the dates I decided to try something that I haven't done yet and that is to have a to have the days of the week be written in white with a darker background so that's what those little strips are for um, I'm gonna let that rest for just a few minutes while I do the rest of the dates and everything and then I'll go back in later with my white gel pen and write the days of the week on those little strips So down here I just finished up the um, chart for my habit tracker and now I'm working on my next week box and I'm just going to draw in all of the little icons. I'm doing the same thing down here for my um, headers over these boxes so I'm just going to write habits and next week in my white gel pen on those little strips. So I'm just going through and doing all of my little picture icons for my different habits that I like to track throughout the day. And unfortunately I had another incident where my camera decided to cut out before I was completely done filming. So the only thing that you guys are missing is the um, actual dividing of each of the days with my black pen and then also just adding that white gel pen header to the dates and to my boxes at the bottom. Um, but don't worry, I'm going to include a beautiful picture of everything once it's all completely done.
all done and ain't she a beaut. So I wish that I could have captured the last bit of this video, but um, up on the 6th and the 7th, I have two birthdays this week and my camera cut out before I outlined them and did the lettering on there. Um, which makes me really sad. I wish that it was included, but there will be plenty more videos to come where, you know, I'll be able to show you guys how I do that and all that good stuff. So it's sad for now, but you know, we have many more weeks to come. But with or without the last couple seconds of footage, I still love this spread. I think it's so cute and I hope you do too. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy that you joined me this week. I really hope that you are getting all the Hugo vibes and you're feeling nice and cozy and in a content state of being. Um, so yeah, I hope that this inspired you. I hope that it will inspire you either in your bullet journal life or in your real life. So if you have not already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Carrie Bowberry Co. Um, you'll be able to see any announcements for uh, new videos that I've posted. You'll be able to see all of my spreads after the pen when they're all filled in. And um, just all of the extra things that are happening with the business and the brand and all that good stuff. I have a lot of really cool things happening this year and I'm so excited to share them with all of you and everything that I am doing is only possible because of you guys. So thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting my YouTube channel, for supporting my Instagram. It just means the world to me. So I just really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. So I will see you very shortly, uh, probably next week and with hopefully some new equipment. So if you guys haven't already, please subscribe so that you can see all of the future loveliness that is to come. Thanks so much guys. See you next time.